Dear folks, while I have been here just a month now, I have so much to tell you. It is truly beautiful here. The mountains rise up all around our camp. You would not believe the size of these trees. The biggest pines are over three feet through and are so awfully tall. We're building a road up to a big butte where the CCC plans to construct a fire lookout. To help clear the way, two friends of mine, Frank and Leon, fell a huge pine yesterday. I counted 259 rings on it. We're cutting through timber so thick, it is dark beneath it even at midday. The Pacific Northwest mountain air is sure fresh. With his fondness for the woods, I'm sure Brother Emerson would love it here. There's 28 of us up at this new side camp, mostly all Nebraska boys. We all get our own bunks and sleep under old army blankets in a big tent with a wooden frame. The creek is two feet from the back of the tent, so I don't have to go far to take a bath. From my bunk, I can hear the creek's rapids all night long. It sure is swell to sleep by, and helps to drown out all us weary men who so like to snore. My first week here, I helped chop, clear, and burn brush, much like a hard day's work back on the farm. Now we've moved farther up valley, carving a route for this new road to the lookout site. Six timber fallers lead, followed by fellows that clear out the smaller trees. My powder crew comes next, dynamiting all the rock and stumps. A caterpillar tractor rigged with a bulldozer blade follows behind us. With nine more miles to go to the top of the butte, we should be busy on this project until the winter snow arrives. Not all the CCC boys hereabouts are building roads. Down at the main camp, there's work gangs putting in telephone lines, constructing forest service cabins, and even building campgrounds. Seems like more and more of the boys are also going out on tree planting crews, making brand new forests. With canvas bags full of seedlings strapped over their shoulders and special hose, they line out and plant new trees all day long. Remember Quentin Purcell from Fremont? He ended up on a crew doing insect control work near town. Me, I'm plenty happy right here in this side camp up in the heart of the wilderness, right alongside the deer and elk and bear. Mom, you would not believe the size of the wild blackberries here, big as dad's thumbs. And the skeeters are as considerable as airplanes. Some of the boys are also having problems with poison oak. This morning we had fresh milk for the first time since we arrived. They have covered our mess hall tables with oil cloth, which makes them seem more like home. Oh, if you complain about the food, Red, our camp cook, really raises the devil. The boys sure do like to tease him. But really, his food ain't that bad. Tonight for supper, we had venison, mashed potatoes, gravy, bread, string beans, and all the cake we could eat. Freddie Horse, a local Indian who's working on the powder crew with us, hunted and killed the buck. Tomorrow night, Red has promised us strawberries for an added treat for dessert. Got a package this week from Aunt Sarah. She sent me candy, gum, and lemon drops. Please thank her for me next time you see her. Also, I sure hope Grandpa's feeling better. We had our first payday last Friday, and as they promised, back at Fort Crook, our pay is $30 a month. They give me $5 for spending loot here, and the rest is sent back to you folks each month. Hope no slum gullion pokes into the mailbags and steals it. Last weekend, they drove a truckload of us into town for the first time. I watched a Laurel and Hardy comedy and a Mickey Mouse cartoon. Seems like a lot of the boys like to spend too much of their spare hours drinking white lightning and wasting all their money on gambling. I'd rather hike and fish the big rainbow trout in these surrounding canyons. Be sure and tell Uncle Waldo that I've already caught 23 of these ever so delicious fish. At this week's camp meeting, our camp commander, Major Sutton, told us we can take correspondence classes from Oregon State University. I am enrolling in forestry and engineering. Should help me pass the evening time in between swimming and playing baseball with the boys. 
As I write this, a big forest fire is out of control not too far from here. Ed Sandstrom, head ranger for this Forest Service District, says we could get a fire call at any time. This firefighting business is supposed to be tough doings. A good time for us plain states boys to truly show our stuff. Hard to believe, but Red says that once it starts to rain around here, it never stops. Our camp is located at 4,000 feet, already getting a little cold nights beneath my army blankets. They have promised us high top leather boots and canvas pants before this rain and mud season sets in. Looks like I'm down to my last sheet of stationery. Time to buy some more at the post exchange. Last week I bought a CCC belt buckle there with some of my earnings. Also got a new knife, a lot like the one I used last year husking corn with the cousins. I sure miss the corn from mom's garden. And how are my hound dogs, Joe and Zeke? Sure do enjoy my new life here and will always appreciate the opportunity Roosevelt provided me. But I truly do miss home. Shucks, suppose that even includes that little rascal Emerson. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I'd best be heading for my bunk. Our reveille comes awful early. Getting your last letter sure brightened my day. Please, say hello from this distant CCC and Roll E to everyone back home. Imagine my six months here will be up before I know it. Your loving son, Seth. Come on, get smart, tune up, and start to whistle while you work. 